Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Program Capital Beat. Actor turned politician and BJP MP Kangana Ranaut of late has been giving many controversial interviews which have landed BJP in a tight spot. Now, days after her objectionable comments about the farmers' protest and even after she was cautioned by her own party, Kangana Ranaut has done it once again. In an interview to Lalan Top, Kangana Ranaut now says publicly that there is no need for a caste census and she tries to justify it in her own manner that the party has done enough by making a Dalit president like Ram Nath Kovind. That's a different story that she couldn't even uh, spell out the name properly and uh, call Ram Nath Govind. She called him Ram Kovid. That's a different story and I'm not getting into that because I find it demeaning even to discuss that. But uh, the point is that she's made public of the fact that there is no need for a caste census. Now, uh, and she also says that the BJP has made Ram Nath Govind the Dalit president, following it up with Draupadi Murmu, who's a tribal president, which the country has as of now. Now, Congress's uh, Supriya Srinet has said, and I'm going to quote her what she's exactly said. She says that BJP will not conduct a caste census and is strictly against it. These are not my words, but that of the elected representative Kangana Ranaut. Now to this, now the BJP spokesperson, Guru Prakash Paswan, has said that uh, the Home Minister has said that if the need arises, they will conduct a caste census. But Kangana's assertion does not reflect the party's stand. So within a week, the party had to backtrack. Party is on the back foot because of Kangana Rao's, Ranaut's com comment. Last week, uh, she had said that uh, these uh, farmers' protests, uh, uh, the farmers were almost like rapists. They were murderers. This is what she said. Then she said that there was a Bangladesh-like situation. Had it not been for Narendra Modi government, and they, would have, uh, they had to withdraw the farmers' bill. All those things which she said. And now she said this again on the caste census. So... What does one make of Kangana Ranaut's comment? Now, is she, is she out of control of BJP, despite the fact that she's been cautioned? And if she's doing that deliberate act once again, what does it show? That BJP doesn't have the command of things. Smriti Rani saying something else. Kangana Ranaut saying something else. And of course, the main party's stance on the caste census. What does it reflect? Is BJP still appearing wishy-washy? Uh, the fact that they have distanced themselves from Kangana Ranaut's comments, but at the same time, they are saying that if need be, we will conduct the caste census. So we'll try and discuss all of this. Joining me now is Pushpraj Deshpande, who's the author of the Bharat Jodo Yatra, uh, a book called Bharat Jodo Yatra, and he works closely with the India Alliance as well. Thank you so much, Pushpraj, for joining. We have Juhi Singh, who is the spokesperson for the Samajwadi Party. Juhi, thank you so much for joining. We have Rachna Gupta, who's a senior journalist and former state editor of Dainik Jagran, from Himachal Pradesh. She's also an author and she's written a number of books. Thank you so much, Rachna, for joining. I'll begin with uh, uh, Juhi Singh on uh, the comments which Kangana Ranaut has made. Juhi, how would you really read about Kangana, the way she said it in the interview, very brazenly, that where is the need for a caste census? And then she lists out examples of uh, Ramnath Kovind and what the party has done for Draupadi Murmu. Now, would you say that BJP still is very, very evasive about their stand as far as uh, caste census is concerned? Uh, uh, Nilu, first of all, uh, the BJP has been very clear that they do not want to conduct the caste census. They've been vocal about it. They've said it on various uh, electoral platforms. Uh, they might not have said it in the parliament, but uh, their various representatives have said it. As for, uh, um, I would say, the member of parliament from Monday, the trials and travails of uh, electing representatives like this uh, um, throws an example in democracy uh, that uh, it's not just that she has spoken what the BGP says, that they don't want a caste census, they will not conduct it. It's the way she trivializes the whole thing in the interview without really understanding the need for it or without even making the effort. I've seen the interview and I think the anchor is constantly trying to guide her uh, to various reports, whether it's the Rony Commission, it's the Kakata Lekar report, or the Mandal Commission report. But uh, uh, the fact that uh, she just refuses to go there also reflects the fact that uh, uh, are we uh, reaching that age of bankruptcy of uh, you know, electing representatives who will just 
to the party line also without understanding the party line so i think uh, for the bjp it's uh, double jeopardy as i can say she'd already made a statement about uh, the farmers protest where and even in this interview if you uh, if somebody else would have said it the bjp would be off with their head she actually said would you rape the women of the uh, savan caste really uh, is that uh, a responsible uh, very irresponsible statement so i would say that uh, it is a bjp stance because they cannot they will not allow the caste census to happen the interventions which uh, the anchor has talked about are very much needed which is why the samajwadi party i think even the, the jdu the various congress the india alliance wants it to happen and it also has certain socio economic data so uh, that's how the interventions will happen but uh, people like uh, mr nawat either uh, need to the bjp needs to have a coaching class and i'm not signaling her out because she's a woman that's uh, very convenient you know she's a woman she's a actor but there are many like this she's not alone if you put them uh, on uh, the platform if you call them for the interview and ask them some intelligent questions uh, uh, they'll be going nowhere so uh, i think that uh, parties need to put themselves together and put up representatives and and uh, astonishing thing is she's won she's an elected representative again Absolutely. i mean i would say that uh, um, ironical that's my first no, statement uh, but but another question to you juhi because uh, you're a woman yourself and uh, i saw yeah. a lot of reactions on the social media where people are commenting that uh, she's uh, one of those mps with the lowest iq and personally i mean if i talk about myself i found it very demeaning to to call yeah. a woman that you know she's of a very low iq she doesn't have knowledge but the fact is that if you look at the clip she basically doesn't know uh, how to call ramnath govind how to address him with yes. his full name then she doesn't know about affirmative action she says the, the moment saurabh uh, divedi the anchor of lalan top yeah. asks him like what about the affirmative action she retorts back saying as in as if she doesn't know about the affirmative action she doesn't want to talk about the ncrb data which talks about the atrocities on the dalits yeah. and uh, the people from the backward caste now if an elected representative like kangana ranaut gives interviews what are we to assume that a lady who comes from a so called bollywood background she shouldn't be asked questions like these uh, i mean how how does one i mean i was just imagining that had i been in saurabh divedi's place and if i would have asked a similar questions i don't know how i would have responded i really don't know but to call kangana you know of the lowest iq and then you know she's not been able to respond to such questions how does one really read this kind of a situation uh, so nilu i mean uh, of course uh, saurav's face was a study in uh, uh, sarcasm <laughs> i would say that but uh, yes uh, social media is trolling her uh, i would say that uh, anyway uh, social media shows she's but she's just not made the effort i mean you are going on lalan talk or you're going on any anchor show you're not going there to promote your movie right to or you could have made it clear that i'm going there to promote a movie and then your actor you would have asked you are going there as a member of parliament you should have had the basic these are the it's not as if he was asking about history right uh, he was asking about present he was asking about uh, policies interventions he was asking about our president he also corrected her as to who the first dalit president was right so uh, these are uh, names you could follow but uh, affirmative action uh, why not why should she not know we are, the caste census is one of the biggest uh, issues which all parties are uh, discussing women uh, uh, crime against women again at the moment it's one of the biggest issues and you are trivializing yes. it by saying that you assume if we are to assume that she knows what affirmative action is and she deliberately might have said it like this then was this party stand she was was she spelling out the party stand on uh, caste census though now the bjp spokespersons are distancing themselves but then if she's saying it so brazenly and so deliberately what does it mean does it mean that it's it's a bjp stand not to conduct the caste census so is it that the bjp's attitude that they allow people to talk nonsense about very serious issues and then just uh, distance themselves uh, from it uh, you know that that's not asked at uh, even the constitution uh, the first person who said that they're going to change the constitution charso part was lallu singh 
uh, then I think JP Nadda also made some statements like that. And suddenly it was as if the opposition was uh, talking about this fact that uh, we need to protect our constitution when the uh, actual uh, discourse was started. So the touch and go thing as to what can be the democratic tolerance of our system is often tested by BJP. And that's their character. And by Kangana, I think... Uh, Again, member of parliament, I would not take a name, but Kangana, I would say that they are also testing the intelligence. I mean, I've been told by her for no reason at all. I mean, I was, I, I would part and I was talking about uh, our member of parliament, Jaya Bachchan. But uh, the uh, thing is, again, that uh, don't uh, challenge the intellect of the people by, uh, you know, uh, allowing such people to talk about serious issues. And if it is, then it is your party line. Then you accept it that we are not going to conduct caste census and we are going to put up representatives who will not know anything about it because it's easier to distance when it is convenient, you know, throw them under the bus. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, TK Rajlakshmi, senior deputy editor from the Frontline, also joins us. Thank you so much, Rajlakshmi. But I want to uh, come to Pushpraj Desh Pandey now. Uh, Pushpraj, what do you feel now? Uh, basically, the stand which BJP has taken, Guru Prakash Paswan, if you read his statement, he said that you know, Kahuna's assertion is not, does not reflect the party's stand. But the very fact that uh, she's going on interviews, speaking, does it absolve BJP as far as the caste is concerned? Uh, thanks, Neeluji, for having me on your show. Uh, firstly, very quickly on the caste census issue which you first raised, the BJP has both in Parliament and in the Supreme Court in an affidavit said that it will not be conducting the caste census. This was in the last Parliament session, not this one, uh, before the elections. So the fact is that uh, the MP from Monday has just publicly articulated and conceded interrupt you for a second uh, there's some sound coming from somewhere if uh, i can uh, may I request all the panelists to just mute themselves yeah. there's some sound which is coming from somewhere i don't know can you all just mute yourselves yeah okay pushpraj go ahead please yeah. so what i was saying is that since the bjp has publicly said that it won't be con uh, conducting the caste census in the last parliament session uh, what the Mandi MP has uh, publicly conceded is something that the BJP privately argues upon, right? So there's nothing really, I mean, to say that we don't agree with her stand now is just, uh, is just uh, it, it, it's now just covering up for what it actually privately believes. That is the first thing. She is doing the party line vis-a-vis -vis the caste census. The second thing is that, you know, this entire uh, trolling of the Mandi MP because she's a woman and because she's an actor, I think is very unfounded because frankly speaking, uh, there have been many uh, filmmakers and actors who have made very substantive and constructive, uh, who have had very constructive and substantive legislative careers. You have Mr. Uh, Dutt, you had Shabana Azmi, you had Sham Benegal, you had Raj Babbar, uh, Jaya Bachchan, so many of them have done it, even women. You have Moa, Moa Mothra, you have Kanimuri, you have Supriya Surya, you have Mrs. Gandhi. So it's not like either of those two things are, uh, are, are things that you need to attack her on. The problem is that it's a larger structural issue with vis-a-vis uh, -vis the BJP. The BJP has centralized power so much and every time it goes into every election, right, whether it's from the Panchayat or Municipal Corporation, right all the way till the Parliament, they're asking for a vote on the Prime Minister, on Prime Minister Modi. So there is absolutely no... Uh, there is no need for uh, any legislator at any level to be informed of any pol substantive policy matters. You are asking for a vote on Modi ji. So you can be the vilest of criminals and you see the number of uh, uh, people who are accused in the BJP of heinous crimes, including uh, rapes and murders, and you will get scot-free because the vote is for BJP. So the Mandi MP represents a larger structural problem with the BJP, that they have reduced legislative functions of um, legislators to uh, they have to consign them to the dustbin of history that is the third thing now with regard to what she said about uh, the issues of dalit and uh, obcs and uh, adivasi rights if you see she has been saying something that the organizer and the rss and the bjp have been saying all along they might not be doing it publicly in forums i mean you might not do it internationally or in public forums because it's not politically kosher to do but that is what they have been doing they give OBCs and Dalits and Adivas a symbolic pose and then they do everything in their power to undermine them. They have continuously said in the Supreme Court and in Parliament that manual scavenging has ended in the country. Has it really ended? 
there are so many deaths that are reported in every newspaper i mean many of you at least two of your panelists are uh, are journalists and one of them is a respected leader in up we know about the fact that there are a number of manual scavenger deaths the bjp just obfuscate that issue that is just one issue then the fact is that atrocities against dalits have risen almost by 53% in the last 5 years that is something that they offer uh, against uh, and this is against dalits and other uh, against adivasis is 46% that is something that they again uh, obfuscate the scsp tsp fund they have if you remove non targeted expenditure which is something that the policy mandates that you do you have actually slashed scsp tsp fund by almost 58% why because you put in sports fund of india statue of unity fund some random stuff you have put in which does not cl- uh, classify as targeted expenditure on the scsp tsp fund so my point is the bjp has always paid lip service for the welfare of dalits adivasis and obcs and what the mandi mp is doing unfortunately she is not being politically smart about it because that's what the bjp culture is that privately you do whatever you need to do let's undermine their rights let's undermine their freedoms let's un- do whatever it takes to just make them symbolically uh, represented but publicly we'll say that we are the biggest uh, we are the greatest uh, boons on this planet i mean uh, prime minister modi i know for a fact that many whatsapp channels on the uh, uh, bjp side try to project him as a uh, new uh, the 21st century ambedkar i mean this kind of, <laughs> this kind of symbolic rhetoric is just mind boggling but that's what the bjp is they are taught to lie and they are taught to you know just present a different face hathi ke daat do hote hai na khane ki aur dikhane ki is that hmm. that's the story here so uh, you know yeah. if you look at the clip uh, which is viral then kangana ranaut says mera stand wahi hai jo yogi ji ka hai which means her stand is very similar to what yogi ji says saath rahenge nek rahenge batenge to katenge but uh, that's what she says batenge to katenge and uh, this is what she says and then she goes on to talk about uh, you know this this kind of a narrative now she, her stand being similar to yogi now does it mean that she's idolizing yogi she blindly follows yogi she doesn't listen to anyone in the party because we've got to talk about the command center of the bjp what has really gone wrong there was a time in the last 10 years not even a single person used to move without the consent of the central leadership now here you are seeing smriti irani going desire i mean desire or you would call her uh, she she is deliberately trying to appear as a mature politician where she talks about the good politics of uh, uh, rahul gandhi then here you have kangana ranaut who, ju- who doesn't seem to be listening to the party's command center now this has happened because twice this week she has met jp nadda and if she she again dares to make a comment like this on the caste census does it not land bjp into a tight spot and how and is bjp not on the not on a complete back foot because of her so uh, nilu but uh, uh, when he she says this is uh, what the bjp as my learned friend out here was saying this is what the bjp always was there was a very centralized command center and nobody had to understand anything whatever uh, uh, the prime minister or now our chief minister said uh, was okay without understanding the nuances of it understanding what uh, the perception of it the narrative was set by the top leadership and they would uh, just go look at the spokesperson the same lines look at their leaders look at the member of parliament i was once on a panel with a member of parliament who said that there is uh, no need for the various committees uh, in the parliament and that was their line because uh, there were certain women issues involved so she is saying exactly that but um, uh, maybe as again it was mentioned uh, not in a very uh, intelligent way and uh, because uh, i would say she's like a babe in the woods of the bjp and they've thrown her out that you uh, talk about our policies uh, they were never in favor of caste census uh, the uh, never in favor of the rights of the dalits i said rights what uh, they like to do is uh, portray is as the prime minister is doing a great favor uh, uh, to the entire population of india by his uh, esteemed presence and now our chief minister so uh, and i don't think she understands what uh, the chief minister of up said when he said uh, batenge uh, to katenge and where he said that so uh, there is no need to just go on television uh, think that entire india uh, is uh, mentally challenged i would say and uh, which is what the bjp has been thinking for a long time that whatever they say 
is uh, right and uh, there are no voices of dissent of rationality also so right. kangara i think is a perfect example for them i mean uh, she is that perfect mouthpiece uh, the um, mandi mp uh, to talk about this and we'll have more of her because uh, they been, as for uh, uh, our ex uh, Cabinet Minister Smriti Rani, she's lost her election, so now she decides to become a statesman. No, I mean uh, now she's uh, studying the, the body language of uh, Rahul Gandhi ji. So uh, I would say the people of India are not fools. Don't even think you've just lost uh, election badly in UP, which was your uh, laboratory of hate, where you experimented all the divisive politics, and uh, they'll uh, understand what you are doing. Yes, Meera. Raj Lakshmi, I was coming to you now that, uh, you know, there are many tweets uh, today and a uh, lot of posts saying that allow Kangana to speak unhindered because she's turning out to be a jackpot for the opposition. The more she speaks, the more interviews she gives, the more bloopers she makes is going to be a blessing for the opposition. What would you really say? And then I'll go to Rachna. Okay, about, uh, okay, about Kangana, <laughs> I think, you know, uh, the BJP is extremely fond of this, uh, you know, of this particular scheme of theirs, which is all about skill development, right? Huh? And training. Huh? So I think I think a little bit of skill development, you know, and training of of its MPs, uh, I think is required. That is, if it uh, if it's really keen uh, to sort of avoid these kind of embarrassing bloopers, uh, I mean, if, I mean, one can sort of call it. But 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 clearly, I do not think that it seemed to be you know really serious about that. Because because uh, after after saying that she was not authorized to make such statements just a few days ago, I mean she has again sort of come up and and spoken you know on policy issues uh, which clearly she has no idea about right. So I think that that training is very crucial. Uh, I mean for her and also for several. One thing that really has happened: the skilling and the training yeah. of the MPs, which normally happens. Has it really happened? Has she taken that seriously, Kangana Ranaut? Well, I think I think she may have been trained about you know procedures in Parliament and and about how to uh, how to raise questions you know in question R etc. But what kind of but what kind of questions she's supposed to raise and should raise? I think all that all that should go through you know a vetting process and also the things that she's supposed to say publicly, you know, because clearly there are. I mean, I mean, I thought that the BJP was pretty much you know disciplined uh, disciplined party with a fixed set of sp spokespersons. Who are you know authorized to make certain statements, and in fact, uh, not only certain kind of statements, the form in which they make those statements is also has a certain structure. It's not something which is completely ad hoc, right? Uh, of course, you know they have their uh, they have the lot, you know, of uh, of you know motor mouths, uh, but then who's pew, you know, communal uh, and all that, uh, uh, you know, and all that language. But then that's also for a certain audience. And uh, and I do not think that it that that all that is said you know without any purpose. But here, what what she seems to be doing is purposeless. I mean, actually, it doesn't uh, uh, seem really a doesn't seem you know original to say that there are only teen jatiya. I mean, we heard all that during the uh, uh, in the elections, you know, through through the top man himself, you know, saying that uh, okay, there are only three castes and that you know suddenly he's talking you know, like a Marxist. That that the only thing exists that is class, okay. So 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 yes. all of us are bizarre, huh? But 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 I think here uh, uh, it's also an issue, you know, with the BJP also, you know, importing you know a lot of people from other parties, okay, uh, uh, and uh, and not and not really having you know, an RSS, uh, you know, RSS background. And I think uh, uh, I think of course Kangana won because she's Kangana, she's a big star, and uh, and you know her there's a four fondness for her you know in her constituency but other than that uh, and other than being you know uh, being you know modi bhakt which which she has been throughout uh, i don't think there's anything else that she has uh, shown you know her acumen in 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 sort of being you know responsive you know even as a politician you know the issues that sort of concern her own home state that that sort of concern the country what i'm worried what i'm worried really and as a woman journalist you know i mean why would a person like kangana ranaut you know, be so obstinate on self-deprecating herself. Now, doesn't she realize that, you know, if she gives interviews like these, she will land up in controversies, she'll land up her party in a spot. And then, you know, it's so insulting for herself to see in a light like that. I mean, being an MP and you don't know about informative, I'll come to you, Pushpraj, I'll come to you. But 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 a woman yeah. MP talking like this, what about her PR uh, team? Uh, what about her advisors? Are they not giving her a sound advice? 
or is she beyond all this now she thinks that she she doesn't need any of the advice anymore yeah. Yeah. so no i think maybe our advisors also need to be trained you see the the training has to start uh, at a very at, at a very rud at a rudimentary level so uh, so all that uh, all that takes time you know and uh, uh, you know I, i mean i don't know in fact what does the rss think about all this you know i'd be quite interested in knowing what the what the yeah. rss who feels about all these new you know inductees uh in mm -hmm. the party and who uh, and who make all kinds of states statements which are quite uh, in fact counter productive you know in fact earlier you know one used to feel that only congressmen shoot them out of okay and they, and they have their kalidasa moments more than once but now it seems that the bjp has a, has a fair enough share of those kalidasas in their own party and uh, and i think a lot of you know damage control is actually mm -hmm. doing damage control because because i think they did sense that her attack you know on the uh, you know on the farmers is going to have an impact in the elections you know otherwise you know they would not have issued that kind of a statement you know they would have just dismissed it because mm -hmm. because that has been the bjp's position also okay that the farmers movement was engineered from outside and that all kinds of criminal elements were there etc so so what she said was was of course in a um, i think a less sophisticated uh, style but she in fact uh, i think more or less you know, she meant you know what her party has been saying all along but her party uh, did intervene you know to rein her in because they saw that you know this this is going to backfire and i'm sure it's uh, it's already had its you know reverb uh, reverberations among the farming community in the state absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah pushpa you were raising your hand in between then i'll go to rachna yes please let's understand why kangana ranawat is doing this entire thing she's not doing this because she's an mp she's doing this because she wants to promote her film that's it the emergency is coming out and she was courting controversy deliberately to promote her film and the reason why this is happening the, the reason why this is tolerated in the bjp is because it's the bjp this is the big bossization of the bjp big bo uh, i mean bjp has become a reality tv it promotes a kind of politics which is reality tv driven there is no substance mps or pol uh, political office bearers don't need to have any substance don't need to have any kind of uh, uh, any kind of uh, substantive contribution to society as far as they fulfill two criteria one is that they are able to do sycophancy to the prime minister and the other thing is that they are able to raise some kind of attention to themselves or the party that's it and that's what kangana was doing the only reason that she is pulled in is because it's impacting the prime minister's image the prime minister's politics otherwise the bjp really doesn't care about stuff otherwise they would have acted against sengar they would have acted against uh, this guy brijbushan they would have acted against a number uh, revanna and jade they would have broken up the alliance with jds they would have done many other uh, similar kind of things so they don't do that the reason they are acting against her is because it will adversely impact this thing but this is the larger politics of the bjp now ki you are just sheep behind a shepherd that's it and i'll come to rachna gupta now rachna i really want to understand to you that is how is the constituency of kangana ranaut which means mandi and the people of mandi how are they taking up all these statements whether she's making a statement on the farmers whether she's making a statement on uh, the caste census how seriously are the people uh, taking up kangana because they are the ones who voted for her and now when they see these bloopers what is their reaction how is himachal reacting to kangana ranaut sir uh, Uh, foolish himachal actually himachal uh, doesn't bother himachal doesn't bother about um, kangana north at all they don't bother what she says what she's because this is all the national issue which she is raising one dalit issue the other issue the second issue this that but uh, as far as himachal is concerned she talks so bad about himachal because when the calamity came in last uh, rains and there was a lot of uh, a uh, disaster in her own constituency the tribal areas and the mandi district itself she she communicated that this i was advised by the uh, by the district administration not to come madam because this is the not the right time to visit the area it's very difficult for you to reach to the uh, flood affected areas to main ye keh rahi hu ki matlab log yahan pe isko election se pehle bhi and after election they don't bother her at all because she what she says is Uh, is contrary to the basic temperament of himachali people people in himachal are very sober very simple and they are not very crook and sharp and she is a landed actress from bollywood back to himachal she left himachal long back and she never says that she is from bhamla she used to claim that she is from manali matlab you know uh, let's let's talk about point about point wise uh, she hails from such a constituency in himachal where 
uh, the assembly segments are 17 and among these 17 assembly seg segments three are total tribal uh, assemblies the entire himachal has only three tribal assemblies and uh, they are they they falls in mandi parliament so if she doesn't she is not cared about uh, tribal reservation or the caste reservation or whatever what she has commented a few days ago then she is not bothered about her own area you know hmm. the uh, the people where there is you know uh, let me take you back to the election campaign time she traveled with a lot of uh, party workers because party workers had to pay for the party that they were dedicated party workers in Mandi parliament, especially where the former chief minister Jairam Thakur hails from Mandi only. And uh, the Mandi was his responsibility to carry Kangana North and make her win sure shot. So when people of the party, the party workers uh, were accompanying her, so, uh, some of them discussed few things with me that uh, first, she talks about her makeup, you know, where the makeup crew will stay. And uh, secondly, and uh, uh, the expenses and all, all, all the issues were coming out. Oh, no, we don't want this. Where there is no dhaba, there is no tea available anywhere, where there is no restroom. In such a remote area, she was going for the campaigning. And she was expecting that her crew of uh, uh, more than 50 people will have a comfortable stay. There is no five star, not even two star or one star. So this kind of, then the people realized, the workers realized that this will not go for a longer time. You know, uh, when she won, you know, the difference of her winning margin was drastically had come down. election the Monday district had the country's BJP's largest vote share. That was uh, probably 61 or 64, I, I believe. I'm not sure about the exact figure, but it was 60 plus. But this time, the margin was 4.5 lakh. The difference of vote was 4.5, which was huge in the history. Imagine me kabhi bhi aisa nahi hua. Or this time, that margin had come down to 75,000. Wo bhi that too, with the lot of effort of the local leaders, local MLAs of the BJP were forced to uh, go for her. Jaise bhi karo, jaise bhi karo. Otherwise, people were not uh, for her. Only the party who dedicatedly uh, made her win with the less margin. I, I, I'll I say that 75,000 is no margin as compared to 4.5 lakh. So yeah. this is the one thing. Now she won. After winning, she went there. She did shoot and all like Bollywood uh, queen in, uh, running into uh, this thing. Another responsibility. I will say that if you say to an IIT ke engineer, you say that you are a surgeon ki tarah, aap, uh, Operation karo to can he do? So these are two contrast, you know. Uh, film actress and uh, uh, politics are two different things, and she never belonged to the party earlier. She never worked for the party, so this was the thing. Or uske baad when she won, nobody asked her to come for the welcome speech or thanksgiving or any constituency movement. Matlab ye tha ki bhai high command ne kya diya to make her win, then then they did their job, and after that we have no link with that lady wherever and i personally took the interview of the uh, party party workers are not connected anymore with kangana Ranao no, then no, right. no no another controversy she raised that she issued uh, she set up a office in mandi uh, her own district and she said that only that person can meet me who is holding the aadhar card of mandi only and rest of the people first will come her crew will test that who is from mandi who is not from mandi they will be given the appointment only then they'll ask if you put a nalka in my house or put a bijli in my house so and so and so on so these are really you know but I feel like this personally what I feel because I have worked in journalism here that I have worked in Himachal that BJP has an experiment so I feel like there was a new kind of experiment in Mandi which they knew later that it was a failure so now you can't do anything it was your decision to take because Mandi is such a seat where uh, uh, BJP had a lot of MLAs and uh, former chief minister was from Mandi only. So, there was no one sitting there. The normal worker could have won with huge margin there. That was a comfortable seat for BJP. Had she been from Hamirpur or Kangra or other states, it would be difficult to get her. So, BJP didn't project her intentionally, intentionally won. And I think that sometimes it feels like 
बीजेपी एक बहुत डिसिप्लिन पार्टी है मतलब उसमें डिसिप्लिन अगर किसी और ने ही किया होता ना अभी तक हो गई छुट्टी हो गई होती लेकिन यू नो बीजेपी व्हेन बीजेपी टॉक्स अबाउट डिसिप्लिन एंड द मॉरल वैल्यूज एंड एवरीथिंग एज फार एज आरएसएस इज आल्सो कंसर्न तो तो व्हाई ना व्हाई एनी व्हाई डिडंट एनी एक्शन टू प्लेस अगेंस्ट हर टिल नाउ या दैट ब्रिंग्स मी टू द फाइनल क्वेश्चन रचना दैट ब्रिंग्स मी टू द फाइनल क्वेश्चन आई विल क्लोज द प्रोग्राम आफ्टर दिस एंड राजलक्ष्मी आई विल कम टू यू दैट इज इट टाइम नाउ फॉर बीजेपी टू रेन इन uh kangana ranaut and i'll use the term which you use that was i found it very interesting that it is the kalidasa moment of the bjp the way mm-hmm. she's uh, blooped over uh, uh, the farmers protest she's blooped over on this uh, caste census so is it time now to take some stringent action against kangana ranaut otherwise bjp is in for a deep deep trouble and mm-hmm. who knows it could impact modi directly who knows it could impact amit shah directly so how is the party going to rein in kangana ranaut now according to you yes see see i think um, uh, i think she has uh, she has always been you know a very temperamental person okay she has been a very temperamental person throughout in uh, i'm including in a film career also and uh, and uh, and therefore i mean i mean i would have thought you know as to why would the bjp uh, sort of have have such a person uh, in if at, at all on their uh, uh, you know in fact with them huh? and that to to stand you know in the position of an mp a person who uh, i mean who has not even stood you know for a sarpanch election who has not even stood uh, for you know uh, for in a state assembly election okay and you straight away you know catapult her you know to the uh, to the position of an uh, of an mp and uh, uh, in fact why would they take that risk because you know it also uh, it also so means uh, in fact Uh, causing a lot of you know disaffection uh, of all the uh, uh, I mean of the party workers you know in Mandi uh, and in the state of Himachal where I'm sure there are several people who are far more you know qualified who I mean I mean who have given far more years uh, you know work in the RSS uh, as well as the BJP who could have been candidates the you know uh, but uh, but I think uh, I think actually sort of got her also because because yes because they were quite I think you know desperate also to win seats because. because you know uh, I, i do not think that himachal was such an easy uh, uh, i mean easy show for them uh, but uh, but then but then they can't really expel her from the party you know they can't you know uh, so i'm saying even if the uh, even if they sh- send her a show cause you know okay th- that itself i mean she can tomorrow leave the party i mean you don't know I mean, she can say about some I, mean, i don't like been treated she she likes been treated you know like a diva she has had that uh, she has had that stages uh, stages and stature because she's a good actress but but just with the wrong uh, wrong i think bent of mind probably i mean that can be said and uh, and maybe and maybe she's uh, she uh, she does not have maybe the uh, the i think the disposition to to stay you know in politics for too long because obviously this is not survivor tactics you know for instance if you look at the other uh, other actors you know who the bjp is important you know this is hema malini she might shoot her uh, shoot her mouth off you know on some occasions but she'll also be probably uh, she's not been as you know voluble as her now in right. uh, it uh, so it will be sort of difficult uh, to for rainer in uh, you know at the same time for the party new that she's been uh, an out and out open you know loyalist uh, and swearing her you know allegiance to uh, to mr modi as well as another you know, bjp but but i think she uh, she she doesn't have a sense of what the uh the party maybe stands for you know uh, i mean apart from sort of attacking you know liberal um faces in uh, in the in the arts world uh, uh you know and the film world and uh, uh and maybe uh, yeah. yeah so 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 i do not feel that this uh, that the bjp is going to take the extreme step of really sort of uh, throwing her out uh, but they might issue her show cause notice uh, and uh, and they might call her up and tell her that this is got shash up a while Uh, but i do not think that they're going to do anything like that drastic nahi nahi nilu ji nilu ji nilu ji usme yes. kya hai main aap uh, what i what yes. i feel that uh, somehow somewhere she has got the shield of senior leaders also because she talks about only mm-hmm. modi ji nadda ji and uh, mm-hmm. only she names only one person or two person so that means ki i mean she has the liberty to some extent to to an extent maybe so this is the thing when i get the liberty i will speak on speak on until unless it will come on my head so i i think that uh, probably as she said that uh, no action uh, bjp will take but definitely they will uh, caution her uh, for i mean so the liberty is becoming a liability right 
absolutely she absolutely she kangana is really proving a liability for the bjp yeah. and uh, uh, let me just remind the viewers once again that last week only the party had to issue a press release distancing themselves from what kangana said on the farmers protest but that press release also didn't uh, affect her in any way despite being cautioned not yes. to comment on the policy matters she goes ahead and gives an interview and then she talks about the caste census so the biggest question and with that question i'm going to wind up the program that how will bjp reign in kangana will they take a stringent action against kangana or will they allow her to commit these bloopers and it could be it could end up in some kind of a political suicide as well uh, i'll thank you uh, uh, juhi ji uh, rachna thank you thank you have a wonderful program and one appeal to the viewers who are watching this discussion subscribe to our channel send us your feedback and stay tuned to the fed